you got your Bibles, turn with me to uh, 2 Corinthians. We're going to uh, chapter 3 today. Um, in fact, I think we're going to read the entire chapter. Um, again, 2 Corinthians chapter 3. Uh, declare with me right now, just say glory, glory. to glory. glory. And that means that in the kingdom of God, there's no such thing as a lateral transition. There's only promotion. And we don't measure promotion in the same way that the world measures promotion because sometimes it, what feels like a downgrade is actually just God positioning you for greater glory. All right, nothing on that. Um, you're like, wait, what? what? Uh, I saw this this morning. Um, this is a friend of mine on, uh, on Instagram, um, and this is uh, something that she posted. This is an open letter to Delta uh, Airlines, um, to the Delta flight crew on flight DL-2564 to Atlanta around uh, 2 p.m. on December 26th. She says, hello, my name is Sarah Thomas. My sons and I were flying home from spending Christmas with my parents in Florida. Lucky. (laughs) When our initial flights home were canceled and we were moved to the next available flights. I didn't realize at the time, but this schedule change would have a bigger impact than I expected. My 16-year-old son, Ethan, who I'm sure you remember, along with everybody else at gate 71-79 that day, has moderate autism. He was having a very volatile meltdown because we had to skip lunch in order to catch our flight on time. The lines for food were very long, and though I tried to make something work, we finally had no choice but to get to our gate. Ethan doesn't ever skip a meal. He completely fell apart, screaming, swinging violently all over the place, pulling his hair, etc. When I saw security coming towards us, I thought, well, that's it. They're not going to let us on the plane. But then the gate agent and flight crew came around to our side, literally. I briefly explained the situation, and within a minute, we were escorted onto the plane before everyone else. The crew immediately gave Ethan a big box of assorted snacks and gave drinks to all three of us. In addition, one flight attendant said, it's going to be all right, Mama, and gave me a big hug which you have no idea how much that meant to me. Ethan was immediately more calm, chugging water and snacks while we turned the the air on overhead to help him cool down. They stayed with us while everyone else boarded and reassured me that they would be there even if I needed help throughout the flight. The Delta staff treated us better than church, and I wanted to give honor to where honor is due. Thank you for helping me so quickly resolve the issue, being so kind to us, especially your kindness, consideration for Ethan, having special needs. And I'm sorry I forgot to bring up the snacks, but I will never forget them again. We have flown many times with many airlines, and Delta continues to have better customer service, yada, yada, Alaska's the best, especially... (laughs) Especially the flight crew on DL-25... 64. December 26, 2021. I don't know your names, but thank you so very much. And from the bottom of my heart, God bless you richly for your service, kindness, and compassion. I, I thought I'd, you're like, why, why are you reading that? I thought I'd read that because the, the majority of the stuff that I see on Instagram and Facebook, you know, I started reading, I was like, oh great, here we go. It's the airlines that, that we're going to, we're, we're about to hit a tragedy. Uh, and immediately I read this, and I just, I just, it was so filled with grace and so filled with compassion. And I just thought, man, what, what, what an awesome, what an awesome testimony, really. And also, what a, what a challenge. I also think, just for the, for the Church of Jesus Christ, that this next year we're not going to be about our policies and our regulations. This next year is not about our tradition. This next year is about breaking the box and partnering with the gospel of Jesus Christ, which is a message of good news and great joy for all people. The gospel, again, is good news and great joy for all people. And that means that, uh, that this next year, we can't be all about the handbook. Yeah, but the handbook says, no, no, no. No, we need, we need to be a, a, a little less like 1996 customer service and a little bit more like Nordstrom or maybe a little bit more like Jesus. Jesus was always offending people because they say, but master, that's not the way that we do things. And Jesus is like, 
yeah, but I got a father. And at the end of the day, I'm not accountable to my tradition. I'm accountable to him. Um, back, back when I became a uh, pastor, and I was pastoring for, for a little while, and all of a sudden we found out that there was like a, a budgeting thing that took place. And we found out that we weren't going to be maybe as um, in the black as we'd like to be at the end of the year. And the team was incredible. Pastor Greg, Pastor Keith, I mean, uh, 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 took cutbacks. And, and, and some of the teams took cutbacks in hours. Other, other parts of the team took cutbacks in pay. And it was like the whole team just began doing what needed to get done in order to make things work financially um, for the church. And I remember praying. I remember asking the Lord. I, it was like, you know, how do we handle this? You know, do, do we go before the people and say, you know, we're doing a giving campaign, you know, help, you know, you know SOS. And I, I feel like the, what the Lord said was, bless the people. I, yeah, yes, there needed to be communication, and yes, there should be transparency, but, but not so that we can say, you need to give more. I actually felt like the Lord was saying, hey, we, we, the, the, the challenge for leadership going into, the, going into that time will be, hey, let's, let's not ask for more. Let, let's give more. And you know what? There was, there, we, there was some communication. There was you know, transparency. There, there were difficult, uh, practical, administrative decisions that needed to be made in order to address it. Um, but, you know, by God's faithfulness, we ended that year um, uh, without, it, without a big deficit. We ended that year ahead. We were able to restore people's hours and paychecks and get, 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 and get ahead. The point is this, that sometimes in times of need, our need can get us to be somewhat self-obsessed where we feel like we need to get that need met in order to have peace. But I feel like one of the things that the Lord's going to direct us as a church this coming year is that as we're faced with need and as we're faced with challenges and the kind of challenge that would like to present a mirror in front of us so that we are perpetually reminded of our lack. What the Lord is saying this next year is let's put the mirror away. Let's not, let's not get obsessed or even tripped up by what we don't have, but let's take what we have as a community, as a church, as a people, and let's bless others. Let's bless others offensively. Let's, 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 let, and, and that doesn't just mean financially. That means spiritually, okay? That means, that means in the areas of, 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 you know, a lot of people are wrestling. Uh, I, I'm actually, uh, I'm, I'm pastoring my barber shop right now. So, um, Look at all these barbers there, and um, and we and I'm I'm slowly converting them. I mean, at least to Republicanism, and then eventually to Christ. But you know, uh, <laughs> we get into the vaccines, we get into everything. Everyone's getting their haircut, and everyone's like, "Yeah," you know, you know, and, and <laughs> it's kind of kind of funny, kind of not, and. Um, but one of the one of the things that that that, that you know, and, and, and the Lord just brings up these oppor- uh, these opportunities, and it was really kind of fun. Just the other day, we went, we went and got my hair cut, and, and the lady that cut my hair, she was limping really bad, and so um, and it was busy. It was like a, it was one of those thirty five minute wait days, you know. It was, it was New Year's Eve, and um, and so people are coming and going, and I just got my hair cut. I saw that she was limping, and so people, you know, so there's a lot of chaos, and there's a lot of tohu vavohu in there, and um, so I said to her, hey, hey, I see that. Do you have back problems? And she goes, no. And I said, well, I see that, I see that, you're, I see that you're, uh, you're limping. And she goes, yeah, I had a knee surgery about six months ago, and it hasn't gotten any better. It's still, it's still, it's still really, really bad. I said, well, well, can I pray for it? And she's like, what? I said, well, can I pray for it? And she's like, I don't, I, she, I, you know, she, she was in the tohu vavohu, and it wasn't making any sense. Like, what do you mean pray for it? So it's, I, I came around the counter, and then there's a line of people waiting there at the counter, and I said, let's just, let's bless it. So we made everybody wait. All those people that needed a haircut, why? Because her knee is a little more important than all those people that wanted a haircut. So we got a line of people there waiting, and she has no idea what's going, what's taking place. And she's like, what are you doing? I said, I'm just going to bless you, and we're going to invite Jesus into this knee. She said, okay. I said, Jesus, will you just come and touch, touch her knee right now? Well, she thought I told her to touch her knee. So she bends over, and she, and she grabs her knee. And so we just started inviting the presence to the Lord. Well, <laughs> it was really good. It was all of a sudden like there was no more line of, line of people there. Well, the, the manager, 
she, 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 knows, she really likes me. She likes me so much that she gave me um, discounted haircuts for a long time. I got, I got special cards that other people don't get. So she's looking and she's smiling. Like I got manager's blessing. And we're, we're inviting Jesus into this knee. And we get done. And this lady, she goes, she goes thank you, Darren. And now, you know, because she's got my name on her screen. And she's never called me Darren before. And she gives me a big hug. And I give her a big hug. I go to leave and she goes, she goes thank you for my blessing. I was like, you got it, lady. I couldn't remember her name. So, <laughs> um, the point is, is that God has blessed us, amen? And so let's take that blessing and let's be a blessing and let's watch some of the crazy, tricky stuff that Jesus does with us this next year. Yeah? Awesome. All right, t- just to close me right now, glory, glory. to glory. Okay, glory to glory. Everybody there, 2 Corinthians chapter 3. Okay, are we beginning to commend ourselves again? Or do we need, as some do, letters of recommendation to you or from you? You yourselves are our letters of recommendation, written on our hearts to be known and read by all. And you show that you are a letter from Christ delivered by us, written not with ink, but with the spirit of the living God. Not on tablets, okay, referring to uh, the tablets of Moses and the Ten Commandments, uh, tablets of stone, but on tablets of the human heart. Um, right off the bat, this is, this is what Paul's saying to, to the people. He says, hey, I'm about to tell you about a transition that has taken place. But for some of you, this is going to be a very difficult transition. Because for some of you, it's all about what you can read, what you can see. For some of you, it's all about the handbook. And that's all good. For some of you, um, you are so used to a previous disposition, which was a, which was a glory revealed to Moses, written on stone, which was good. That was a good glory, but there is a greater glory. This is what Paul says. He says, he says, I don't necessarily need a letter at this point. I don't necessarily need even tablets written on stone. Okay, the letters written, written letters of recommendation, hey, that is all good. Even, even there's, there's glory on that, okay? Um, hey, even Ten Commandments and, 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 and what was revealed to Moses, hey, that is good. There's, there's glory on that. He says, but why do I not need it? He goes, because, because I've got you and you are my evidence of transformation, he says, this whole thing has changed. This whole thing has changed from a place of tradition that sets your course to a living evidence of greater glory that's, that's manifesting itself among a people. He says, you want proof? You want evidence? You're it. And then he continues. He says, um, verse 4, such is the confidence. Everyone say Confidence. That we have through Christ towards God. Not that we are sufficient in ourselves to claim anything as coming from us. But our sufficiency is from God. Who has made us sufficient to be ministers of a new covenant. Everyone say new covenant. Not of the letter, but of the spirit. For the letter kills, but the spirit gives life. He says, hey, this is the confidence that we have through Christ towards God. He says, everything has changed. By the way, everything has changed. Praise the Lord. He says, but you need to know this, that the evidence of this change is a boldness of heart, is a great conviction and confidence that you have, that you know your worth, okay? You know that you are worthy, right? Why? Because we have this assurance, we have this greater glory because of our union in Christ Jesus. Not that we are big, bad, bold, bodacious people in and of ourselves, but that our worth, everyone declare my worth, is from God. This is, this, is so, this is so awesome. He says, hey, you need to be confident. And, and, and this is why this is such a radical thing because he's, he's addressing a previous operating system. You see, for, 
thousands of years, the people of God were operating according to an operating system where your worth and your value, your standing within the community was dictated based off of what you had accomplished, based off of what you had done, based off of how you were living your life. And so if you were a disgrace to your community, if you were a disgrace um, to your family, if you were a a disgrace to God, then that is who you were. Your standing, your worth, your merit, your identity, it was made possible by your ability to measure up to the mathematics of the Jewish law. And this is what he says. Listen, I don't know what your report card looks like. He says, listen, I don't know if you have nailed it. I don't know if you have failed everyone. But according to this greater glory dynamic, according to this new upgraded thing that we're a part of, you don't have to operate under the insecurity of the old system, even though there was glory on it. Why? Because the new system has, okay, the new system has been made possible by Christ Jesus. And now because of what he has done, you can be confident. This is really bold. You, you can't tell these people, be confident because of who you are in Christ. No, no, no. Be, be confident because of what you have achieved. Be, be confident because of how much money you make. Be confident because of how your neighbors see you. Be, be confident because of, of what you've done or maybe what you're going to do. You see, the, the reason we're talking about this right now is that a lot of you, you're looking into this next year. Some of you, you're looking back at last year and you're like, 2021, I didn't quite measure up. 2021, yeah, t- tw- and, and it's 2020's fault. It's not my fault. 2020 screwed up everything. 2021, things weren't a whole lot better. 2022, I'm hoping for the best, but things are still not looking a whole, whole lot better because the federal government was supposed to be the solution and now it's not going to be. So um, what, are we, what are we going to, 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 to do? Um, I, I'm going to make it. I'm going to set up my goals. I'm going to set up my, 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 my resolution. I'm going to try to. Now, if this next year looks better than last year, then you might be able to grow in a certain level of confidence. If, if your business dynamics look better than they did last, maybe if your family, I, I don't know what you're kind of going after this next year. I don't know what you're, you're, you're going to try to fine tune, um, but maybe everybody in this room uh, would like to be a little bit better off in some sort of area um, than they were uh, last year and yet this is what Paul is saying here is that regardless of anything that you've done and regardless of anything that you are going to do I want you to find your security I want you to find your boldness I want you to find your value I want you to find the center and seat of your emotions based off of what Christ Jesus has done put you on pause for a second and see what Jesus has done it is enough it is worthy it is holy and so just put yourself on pause and realize you can be confident confident right here, right now. You can center yourself in confidence and boldness. You can center yourself in fearlessness because of your Savior and Shepherd, Christ Jesus. <laughs> Apart from Christ, he says, yeah, there's not a lot of worth there, not a lot of confidence, but knowing who you are in him, what can stop you? Look at what he says. He says, Our sufficiency, our worth, our value, our honor is from who? It is from God. Rest in this for a second. This morning, for those who are in Christ, God honors you. You are honored of the Lord. You're a celebrity. I don't like the celebrity culture in the church. Then you won't like heaven. The celebrity culture, the celebrity culture. These people that just want the celebrities, the celebrities, the celebrities. Hashtag celebrity culture. Celebrity. God hates celebrity. No, no, no. Celebrity means celebrated one. So your religious programming thinks that holiness looks like no one knows who you are. It's a nameless, faceless revival. Nameless, faceless, no names, no face. You're going to hate heaven. Why? Because in in heaven, everyone is celebrated 
as a son, as a daughter of the Most High God. It's time for a celebrity culture in the church where every person is celebrated as a righteous, holy son and daughter of the most high God and not because they have achieved anything yet. He says this, verse six, he has made us sufficient, worthy to be ministers of a new covenant of an upgraded of an upgraded thing that is no longer a system. We're going to see this this is not a system upgrade. This is a completely different disposition. This is a this is a new epoch of of time. Everything has radically See that's that's where a lot of us wrestle because we're used to a religious system that gives us the formula and if we follow the formula that dictates our value. But this, this new covenant invitation is not an upgrade of a system. It is the abolishment of a system, and it is now an opportunity for relationship with a person. See, anything that tries to make intimacy with God a formula or a pattern by which you perform for acceptance... This is a this is a a, a, a a a degradation. This is a subverting of the good news of the gospel that says, "No, you will fail to be your own savior. You will fail to be your own shepherd. Do not allow you to be the center of your confidence and security." Go into this next year not saying, I will show them who I am. No, no, no. We go into this next year saying, I will show them who he is. Because if they can see him, they will be like him. He says, this is not of the letter, but of the spirit. Everyone say, this is not of the letter. It is of the spirit. For the letter kills, but the Spirit gives life. Verse 7. Now, if the ministry of death carved in the letters on stone, which such glory that the Israelites could not gaze at Moses' face because of its glory, which is being brought to an end. This is fascinating. Um, Moses. I, I love Moses. One day we'll get to meet Moses, and, and some of you maybe already have. And, and um, Good times. So you have Moses, and he engaged with the glory of God on Mount Sinai. And, and the Lord gave him a, a rhythm for the Israelites that was the Ten Commandments. And, and the glory of the Lord came upon Moses, so much so that it would shine from his face. The only problem was the shine was waning. The, the shine was slowly, this glory, as good as it was, was, was fading and it was being brought to an end. And Paul writes, verse 8, will not the ministry of the Spirit even have more glory? For if there was glory in the ministry of condemnation, I want you to think of the law and the, the, the uh, uh, not just the, the ten laws on the ten commandments, but, but all of the commandments that were given to the Israelites. This was, this was, this was glorious. This was, this was valuable. This was, this was, Noble. It was it, it it was worth everything to them. Th- this was God showing up and establishing a principle by which the dynamics of heaven could be revealed on the earth. The problem was the principle of heaven established on the earth through these commandments only led to condemnation. Why? Because the people of God did not have the grace of God by the empowerment of the Holy Spirit to measure up to the standard of the law. It's like, how many of you have ever tried to follow all the rules that they have on a swimming pool? It's impossible. And, and that's, ex- that's not exactly what it's like. But anyway, okay. So, <laughs> but it, it, you're like, I was just at a pool recently, and there was like there was like eighty hundred rules, and I was like, and a lifeguard to enforce every one of them, and I was like, that's a rule, and he was, it, it was crazy. All right, so 
Now look at verse 9. For if there was glory on the ministry of condemnation, this, this place of all the world, this, this place of a principle established to establish a rhythm, it had glory on it. It, it was worthy. It was, it was righteous. Sometimes it's nice to have the manual. Sometimes it's nice just to know what is, what is up. He says, but check it out. The ministry of righteousness has a far exceeding glory. What does that mean? It means there is an upgrade available. There is an upgrade available, and it's not a system. It's not a principle. He says here, because of the glory that surprised to an end came with some glory. Much more will what is, okay, much more will what is permanent have glory. This glory that Moses walked in was fading. It was, it was slowly coming to an end. He says, but there is a greater glory. It would say greater glory, greater glory that will not have an end because it is permanent. Yep, verse 12. Since we have such a hope, we are very bold. There's one for your refrigerator. Write it down, print it up, put it on your fridge, put it on your mirror. For if we have hope, we are very bold. The righteous are as bold as lions, right? But those who are in sin, they run when no one's even chasing them. For if we have hope, we are very bold. And not like Moses, who had put a veil over his face so that the Israelites might not gaze at the outcome of what is being brought to an end. We can speak without fear. We can make difficult decisions without fear. We can act without fear. And I'm not giving you permission to be an idiot. Because sometimes when we think, hey, no fear, that means I can do whatever I want. I do what I want. I did not say without consequence. It's not that you say whatever you want and there's no consequence. You do whatever you want without consequence. He says here, since we have a hope We are very bold. And what's he saying here? That when our hope, which is Christ, is in us, and we have a revelation of our union with him, of our upgrade from a system to a person. Now when you go to live, act, live, move, knowing that there's accountability and intimacy, Knowing that there's accountability in friendship. Because you can say you are a friend of God. You can speak as a son. You can speak as a daughter. And you can speak without fear. You can move. You can act. You can function. And you can function from a place without fear. Knowing that for those who have hope are very bold. Greater glory leads to greater boldness. And with greater boldness will come greater glory. We are upgrading this year from glory to glory. And this is not an invitation for a lateral transition. This is an upgrade in your boldness. This is an upgrade in your capacity to comprehend the faithfulness and power of Christ Jesus. This is a discernment and an awareness of his breath, his ruach, even in the midst of darkness. This is the courage to hover in the middle of the chaos and not think for a second that the chaos is indicative that you have missed God. No, the chaos is indicative that you are at where God has called you, so lean into the chaos. Lean in. Lean in and do not lose your hope. For the hope of Christ Jesus within you enables you 
to be very bold. To be very bold and to stand firm and to stand strong, knowing that you're not where you're at because you've asked to be there. You're at where you're at because God has called you, created you, fashioned you, saved you, redeemed you, restored you, is perfecting you. He's transitioning you into his image and likeness. The fruit of his glorious Holy Spirit is growing within your life and he doesn't even ask your permission. He's doing something amazing in and through you and it's different and it's going to be different and some of us might not like it. There are things that I do not necessarily like and yet what I know is the promise is greater glory and every time I read the stories of the greats in the Bible from the patriarchs to the prophets, I always know that that. The story, the glory story is not always glorious. The the history of the glory and value and influence and anointing of Christ from Genesis to Revelation looks like a yo-yo. And a lot of these guys look very bipolar because they're saying, they're saying, he you said greater glory and now it looks like you're about to kill me. It's David all throughout the Psalms crying out to God saying, what the heck? What's his, what's, what's the response? What's our response? How do we fix ourselves? How do we secure ourselves with, with all the uncertainty, with all of the stuff, with all of the tohu vavohu, with all the chosek, with, ev- with everything that we, how, what do we do? We say, I am confident. I have worth. I belong here. I was made for this. I am in him. He is in me And I am not going to operate off of yesterday's operating system that defines my holiness based off of my performance. I am going to go from glory to glory because I am in him and he is not going back to Egypt. He's not going back, so I'm not going back. We will advance. We will move forward. We will grow. We will glow. Why? Because that's what glory does. It grows and it glows. It's what Mahesh, Papa Mahesh Shabda calls the Shekinah. We call it the Shekinah glory, but he calls it the Shekinah. The shock and awe. It's the Shekinah. The shock and awe of God that is on your life. That unexplainable results coming from you and not because of you, but because of where you are dwelling. Because of who you are in. Some of us can't go back. One more time, just declare, since we have hope, we are very bold. We need leaders of hope. We need leaders of hope. In this country, we need leaders of hope. In this state, we need leaders. In our, in our schools, we need leaders of hope. In, 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 in our city councils, we need leaders of hope. And a lot of them don't have any, which means what? There's a lot of people here that are avoiding powerful seats. There are, there are, there are thrones that are being full, filled by people that are leading from a disposition of hopelessness and yesterday's operating system. You need to stop fearing power. You need to stop fearing risk. And you need to be stinking confident knowing in who you are living and where you are abiding. That wasn't on the notes, but it felt good. I think it was good. Verse 14. But their minds were hardened, for to this day, when they read the Old Covenant, the same veil remains unlifted. Because only through Christ it is taken away. Yes, to this day, whenever Moses is read, a veil lies over their hearts. But when one turns to the Lord, the veil is removed. Again, he's talking about the conflict in operating systems. How difficult it is to move from a religious system to a person. 
it's easy for us to look at this and be like, yes, this was written to the Jews. And that's the problem with the Jews. No, that's the problem with the church in America. We want to operate according to a system because tradition feels like it gives us an equation with predictable results. But this is what Christ said. Follow me. You don't know where you're going to sleep. You don't know what you're going to eat. You don't even know what you're going to do. It's going to cost you everything. Are you sure you want to follow me? Paul says, if you're going to go from glory to glory, you're going to have to put an end to yesterday's system to say yes to the person who has become the principal. I love principles, and many of us have good principles, but this year, Christ wants to be the principal. Lord, let every veil be removed. Remove every veil. Every veil that we feel safe because of tradition. Remove every veil. Verse 17. Now. The Lord is the Spirit. And where the Spirit of the Lord is, there is Where the Spirit of the Lord is, there is. Where the Spirit of the Lord is, there is. Where the Spirit of the Lord is, there is. You know what this word means, freedom? It means a, a, it means governmental court-ordered freedom. It's a governmental court-ordered freedom freedom. This is the kind of freedom that is issued from a king. This is not just, I want to feel more free. I feel so free. I feel like I could just dance for hours. No, no, no. This is you. This is, (laughs) this is you with a lifetime sentence in a prison cell and hearing that you are being set free because a king has ordered it. Where the spirit of the Lord is, there is mercy. Where the spirit of the Lord is, there is grace to overcome. Where the spirit of the Lord is, there is not one reason why people have to live in bondage for another year. Where the spirit of the Lord is, there is the breaking of chains from from everything imaginable. I don't know what you're wrestling with this morning. I don't know what you've been chained to. I don't know what kind of cell you've been in. I don't know what kind of lies the enemy has told you, saying it's always going to be this way. You're just going to have to hide it. You're just going to have to put up with it. You're just going to have to deal with it. Listen, where the spirit of the Lord is, there is freedom. And it is so important that we recognize this is court-ordered, legislated freedom that is final and was instituted because of the, the beautiful sacrifice of our Lord Jesus. Jesus Christ 2,000 years ago. You do not need to fight for your freedom. He already fought. He already won. It is done. It is finished. Freedom is made possible because of our Lord Jesus Christ. And we all, with unveiled face, beholding the worth, the value, the doxa of the Lord, are being transformed into the same image from one degree of value, from one degree of worth, from one degree of significance to another. For this comes not from a system, For this comes not from a handbook. For this comes not from a tradition. For this comes not from thinking, I wonder what my friends are going to think about me. I wonder what the church is going to think about me. I wonder what Pastor Darren is going to think about me. No, no. All of this comes from the Lord who is a spirit. This is a greater glory. There was a glory, a glory, on finding out what God requires of you in trying to measure up. But there is a greater glory in securing your identity in the center of who Christ Jesus is. What you need this next year are not principles, new systems. What we need this year 
is to transition from glory to glory, to transition from a system to the person. What we need to do this year is to come to Jesus and to see that there is a seat for us in him, where in him we fully live. In him we fully move. In him we fully have our being. You are valuable because he is valuable and you are seated in him. You are worthy because he is worthy. All blessing is available to you because you are a blessed high son, high daughter of the Lord Jesus Christ. All honor belongs to you because in him you partner with the worthiness and the glory of God. And all power, dunamis, dynamite, mountain moving, dragon slaying power is seated inside of you because you are seated inside of him. He is our confidence. So we don't say, this next year, I will be more confident. No, no. What we do is right here, right now, we say, right now, I am confident. This next year, I'm going to be more strong. No, no, no. We say, right here, right now, I am strong. This next year, I'm going to be more holy. No, no, no. Right here, right now, I am holy. I'm going to clean myself up. I'm going to clean myself up. I'm going to, I'm going to clean it all up. No. I am clean. Why? Because of him. Because of him. Because of Jesus. What's the word for what's the word for 2022? You know, favor, strength, power. Maybe it's Jesus. What's the word for 22? It's it's Jesus. It's find yourself in him. Find yourself in Him. Find yourself in Him. Find yourself in Him. You are in Him. Find yourself in Him. The enemy will do everything that he can to trick you into thinking that you're separated, that you're not worthy, that you're on the outside, that you're an orphan, that you're not good enough. Find, find yourself in Him. Find yourself in Him. I need to get back to the secret place. He is the secret. I need to get back to the prayer closet. He is the prayer closet. He is the prayer closet. I can close my eyes, and now I'm no longer at SRC. I'm in the prayer closet. I'm in my refuge place. I'm in the living vine. I'm in the center of my righteousness. I'm in the lover of my soul. I am in the I am, in the self-existent one, in the ancient of days. This glory has a story. And one day I will go from glory to glory. One day I will transition from the corruptible to the incorruptible. This glory has a past it has a present, it has a future. And this is when I know that when I pass over, my spirit will mock the spirit of death. And it will say, oh death, where is your sting? Let's stand. You don't have to save yourself. You don't have to fix yourself. You don't have to be a better you. You're a son. You're a daughter. And your father is pleased with you. 
And if it's your desire to be awakened to your sonship, to be awakened to your identity in Christ, and to have what the enemy has sold you as a bag of lies, that the chains that have you are so big and so bad and so dark, that the chains that the enemy has had on you are just so big and so heavy. The enemy is a liar enemy is a liar. He says stupid things that aren't even true, like to quit smoking is worse than quitting heroin. That's not even true. That's just a big, bad lie from the enemy just to make it sound impossible. The enemy is a liar. To get set free would be so hard. These things are so hard. Pastor Daniel, you understand. Statistically, I don't even care about statistics. Why? Because I got a great big God. I got a great big God. Hallelujah. Let's pray. Let's pray together. Let's declare Jesus. We come to you this morning with humble hearts. We declare we need you more now today than ever before. We surrender everything. We give you our hearts. We give you our dreams. We give you our ambition. And we ask, oh Lord, that we would live and move and have our being and a revelation that we are in union with you. We stand today participating with the righteousness of Christ Jesus. We stand today engaging with the hope which is Christ Jesus. And we declare we are very bold. We are very confident We can do all things through Christ Jesus, which is our strength. We are because he is. In Jesus' name, everybody in agreement? Said amen, 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 amen. 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 Oh, that was good. That was good. Thanks, Andy. Well, I'm going to be really bold right now. Really bold, and I think we heard earlier, today is Pastor Darren's 40th birthday. (laughs) So if you weren't, uh, we had a little song earlier, but let's get the whole room going. Can we go ahead and we can start singing happy birthday together to him. Happy birthday. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Thank you. Yeah. All right. Woo. So we, um, I just have to say, we had a little something planned, and then we got the uh, snow, and then we got all of everything. But uh, we did do have a gift for you from uh, SRC and the staff. Thank you, thank you. And thank um, you. we want you go ahead. You can go ahead and I, open I if open. you like that. Oh, you guys in the back, I know I have screwed this up. Oh, hey oh. A new bass boat from Cabela's. There we, there we go. I'm just kidding. Thank you, thank you. So we all thought, shoot, that would be just so nice. <laughs> and it just triggered us <laughs> to, to buy the gift certificate from Cabela's so yes. you could go hunting or something. Thank you, thank yes. you, thank so, you. I love it. Yeah. Thank you, thank okay, you. Okay, guys, could you play that? Uh, just this little video that we've got. Happy birthday, oh. From all the staff at SRC, happy 40th birthday! Hey, Pastor Darren, 
from the McCoy Connect Group, we want to say Happy Birthday! Thank you. So let's just uh, extend our hands and then Patty's got a blessing and James always has something. So, uh, so Father, we just thank you for our pastor. Father, we thank you for Darren. Lord, we thank you, God, for this 40 years that you've blessed him, the wisdom that's in him, the grace, the compassion that is uh, within him. And even as that silly little card, I couldn't find anything better than that. <laughs> it's good. It's good. But it's a prophetic <laughs> word. It said that you are ageless. Yes. And so we just declare that you are, you don't look a day over 39, <laughs> and that you are ageless. You are ageless. Father, we just thank you for the next 40 years to be filled, that he would be overflowing with favor and wisdom, he overflowing with knowledge and understanding, that everything you put his hands to, God, would be blessed for your kingdom. And we pray above all, God, that just was so evident in his heart, God, that he would live and move and have his being in Jesus. And that would be, he would be a sign and a wonder, uh, not only in the church, but on the streets, God. So we bless him with that as a congregation. And everybody said... Amen. Thank you. Amen. Thank you. Thank you. All right. <laughs> so we were chatting about this, James and I, and um, just from doing the um, Hebrew letters. So the 40 is the letter Mem. And the Mem is really significant because the meaning of the Mem for 40 is, trans is uh, transformation. So you think about a, a baby in a mother's womb. Yeah, yeah. So wow. Mayim is yeah. the mem, and it means um, revealed truth and hidden truth. Wow. So I just felt like the Lord was saying, this is your year that, I mean, you've gone through so much transformation, but I believe that there's going to be a birthing yes. that is going to come whoo, forth from that. Wow. Hope. Anyways, and it's in the waters it's above. There's a birthing in the spirit. There's a birthing in the spirit. Amen. Not in the natural. Just everybody knows. Not in the natural. <laughs> yep. Just to clarify. Yeah, Andrew's down there like, no. <laughs> Anyways, in the spirit. So there's the water yes. above, the yes. rachia. Yes. And there's the waters below. And I just really felt like the water is so significant for you right now. There's yes. a vibration. There's a frequency in heaven yes. that, we're that you're going to really come into even this year. Wow. Yeah. And, and that part of that is just what you're releasing into the earth. It's really a frequency from heaven that you were releasing. And it's not only going to be... I, I just really feel like that in Daniel, it talks about that the scrolls are opened and, and that it's for such a time as this. And I really believe the Lord's going to open scrolls to you and just give you a word for not just this region, not for just this house, but for the nation. I really believe that, that the Lord awesome. is going to use awesome. you. Awesome. And um, it's going to just be, it's going to be something that people are ready to hear because there's a vibration in the earth that is it, that, and that all the sons of God are groaning and waiting to yeah. just to, for us to be revealed. And I, I really believe you're just a big part of that. So bless Amen. you. Thank you, Patty. Amen. 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 Sorry, Sorry, yeah, yeah. So um, you know those those toy planes that you run and you just throw them and they kind of glide a little bit and they come down. Yeah, well, yeah. that's the picture I see for this 40th year for you is you just launch and you take it off, but it actually doesn't come back down. It just keeps sending higher and higher and it's moving in ways that defies the laws of physics even. And so I just see what, I don't know if that you're the plane or if what you're releasing, what the Lord's releasing through you, but I just see like a defying of the laws of physics, like a defying of just even natural understanding, but what is released through you is going to move at such a greater glory, at such a greater height than could ever be expected or even like controlled in your own ability so yeah i just i just yes. bless that yes. so we really said over you just launching yes. and acceleration and new heights new depths unveiled mysteries yes the unveiled mysteries of god the unveiled mysteries of being a beloved son of the most high god 
This is a beloved son and father in you. You are so well pleased. Well done, son. Well done, son. This is a new era. And I just, wow, I see kingdom establishment in this next decade. Yeah, thank you. A priest and a king upon the earth. This son is a priest and a king upon the earth in Christ Jesus. Yes. Yeah. Thank you, Lord. Yeah. Yeah. Come on. Thanks, Shane. Awesome, bud. <laughs> And then one more short one while you were uh, preaching this morning about the, uh, with the offering. You know, my favorite scripture is that the generous shall govern the earth. But I just really felt it applied to you. I just want to release that over your life. Yes, that yes. it's not the generous sh uh, shall govern the world. It's the earth wow. that the scripture says. And so the earth contains so many things. But uh, it's land. It's sea. It's land. Yeah. It's land. And so... You are a generous man with your giving, with your heart, with your going, with your coming, with your people. I remember when you first stepped into being a pastor and you said to me, what am I? don't really know what I am. And so I just want to declare you are a generous, yes. generous yes. love man yes. that the government, I declare an increase of government over you, a government in earth, a government in kingdom matters, a government in mountains, God. I just thank you, Father, for that increase that even the government shall be upon his shoulders and in those places your anointing shall be great, God, where the government you have placed upon Darren's shoulders. And we thank you, God, that the in there shall be no end to the increase of that government, God, because the zeal of the Lord will perform it in Jesus' name. Yes. Amen. Amen. Thank you. Thank you so much, Shane. All right. Thanks, Thanks, Shane. Okay, well, we just wish you a happy birthday. And I yes. know probably mom's got a big meal planned for you. So she blessings, sure everybody. Be careful out there. Love you guys. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Happy New Year's.